Grand Rising World. Grand Rising family, friends, and follower, followers of Yahuwah. Today is the new moon day. It is the brand new month, Tishri, the first. 6,007 and it is the seventh biblical lunar month. It's also the day of the Feast of Trumpets. When Yahuwah commanded that the trumpet is to be blown. Psalms 81 verses 1 to 5 says, Sing unto Yahuwah our strength. Make a joyful shout to the Father of Jacob. Raise the song and sound the timbrel, the sweet sounding lyre with the harp. Blow the shofar, ram's horn. In the new moon, blow the trumpet, the shofar, at the time appointed. In the full moon, the day of the solemn feast. For this is a statue for Israel and the law to the father of Jacob. Verse 5 says, For he established it in your ship for a testimony when he went into the land of Egypt, where he heard a language. He did not understand. So today is a special day. It's a joyful day. It is the day when we are to shout our praises to Yahuwah, our maker, our creator, the one who lead, led Israel with a fire, with a cloud of cloud by day and a cloud of fire by night. Yahuwah intends that his feast days are to be kept. But because of the deception of Rome, Yahuwah's people have been led astray like lost sheep. But I want to say thanks to Yahuwah Most High today that He is now making His feast days, His holy days known to His people. I'm going to turn to Leviticus 23, where we can read about the feast days of Yahuwah. And so it says, And Yahuwah spoke to Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh moon, which is the seventh month, that's a day like today, on the first of the moon, which is now, today, you shall have a Sabbath. So today is not a working day, it's the new moon day. 
and it is also the Sabbath of trumpets, a memorial of the blowing of trumpets, the feast of trumpets. A holy convocation. You shall do no regular work in it, but you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. So this is the day which Yahuwah spoke about. And this is going to be, the seventh month is going to be a feast, a several, a several, at least three feasts. And I'm going to look at them because they are marked and robes, Gregorian Kalinda. And so I am turning the page right now for us to see Yahuwah's feast day. So here is the new moon day and also the feast of trumpets. Yes, it's the first day of the seventh month. It's recorded right here. And further down, it tells us it's a feast of trumpet, holy to Yahuwah. He shall do no regular work on it. And Yahuwah speak to Moses saying, also the tent of the seventh moon, which is the seventh month, is the day of atonement. It's a holy convocation for you. You shall, not, you shall afflict your soul. A holy convocation to you. You shall afflict your soul and offering made by fire to Yahuwah. You do no work on that same day. The day for the day, for it is the day of atonement. Make by, to make an atonement in front of Yahuwah, your heavenly father. Any person who do not afflict, is any person who is not afflicted on that same day, he shall be cut off from his people. Any person who does any work on that day, he shall be cut off from among his people. You shall do no manner of work at all. It is a statue forever throughout your generations and in all your dwelling. So here is day 10 of the seventh month here. And it, is, it will be the day of atonement. So Yahuwah is calling us to remember to keep his feast and to shout his praises before him because of the mighty work that he has done among us. And so seven days from today will be Yahuwah's Sabbath. Let's, let's see the first Sabbath right here, which is on the 25th of September on Rome's Gregorian calendar. Let us pay heed to the word of Yahuwah. Rome and the Greeks has caused Yahuwah's people to go astray by hiding his word, his truth from them and have replaced it with their pagan holidays. Here we have the the second Sabbath, which is going to be on Friday. Well, should I tell us that the, 
the first Sabbath of the seventh month will be on Friday. So seven days from today will be the first Sabbath. And, the, and it is the eighth on Yahuwah's creation calendar. Remember now, Yahuwah Sabbath is not a day. They are four Sabbaths and each of them has a date. The second Sabbath is going to be the Sabbath of the full moon, which is also the, the, the feast, the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And here are all the rest of the days for the Feast of Tabernacles. All seven, all seven days, it is the Feast of Tabernacles. And this, and here will be, this is the third Sabbath, which is the 22nd. This is the fourth Sabbath, which is the 29th. And then a new month, the eighth month will begin. So we are admonished to keep these feasts throughout our generations. Yes, this is the Day of Atonement and, our, and we are to afflict our souls. It is to be a Sabbath of rest and you shall afflict your soul on the night moon at the evening of the setting of the sun, through the tenth moon, at the setting of the sun, from evening until evening, you shall celebrate your Sabbath. Then Yahuwah spoke unto Moses, saying, the fifteenth day of the seventh month is the Feast of Tabernacles. And there it is, right up here. It's the Feast of Tabernacles, this, and it's the full moon. So Yahweh Sabbath is recorded, recorded in his words. So this month has not just the new moon, but it has the Feast of Trumpets and the Feast of Tabernacles. It says, on the first day you sh it shall be a holy convocation, because that is the Sabbath of the third quarter of the moon. You shall do no regular work, but for seven days he shall offer an offering made by fire. On the eighth day, it shall be a holy convocation. So after the seventh day of tabernacle is over and it's another eight day, which is a, which is a Sabbath and it is the 23rd, 22nd of the seventh month, it shall be a holy convocation. The last great day, for seven days ye shall offer offering of fire. On the eighth day it shall be a holy convocation, the last great day. And you shall offer an offering made by fire. It is the closing gathering of Yahuwah's sacred air. So these are Yahuwah's feasts, which Yahuwah intended for us to keep. So on the 15th day of the seventh moon, we, when you gather the fruits of the land, you must keep the feast of Yahuwah seven days. On the first day, day there should be a Sabbath. And on the eighth day, 
a Sabbath. And on the day before, you shall take choice branches of leafy branches and willows of the brook and rejoice in front of Yahuwah your Elohim for seven days. You shall keep the feast of Yahuwah for seven days in the year. It is a statue forever in your generation. You shall celebrate it in the seventh moon. So that is the seventh month which began today. And you shall, and you shall live in boot seven days. All who are native born of the children of Israel shall live in boots. In order that your generation may know that I made the children of Israel to live in boots when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahuwah, your heavenly father. So Moses declared to the children of Israel the feast of Yahuwah. So this is a great day. It's a great memorial when Yah's people are to shout, shout and sing his praises. I'm gonna sing, sing, sing. I'm gonna shout, shout, shout. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna sing. Praise Yahuwah. For when the gates are open wide, I'm gonna sit by Yahusha's side. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna shout. Praise Yahuwah. Oh, when the saints go marching in, when the saints go marching in, yes, I want to be in the number. When the saints go marching. Yes, I want to, I want for us to know that the new moon is a worship day, similar to Yahuwah's Sabbath, but we are told that work for the sanctuary and work like cooking is allowed on new moon day, whereas it is not allowed on, on the seventh day Sabbath. So when the new moon appear, that day is a worship day. And after that worship day, this, the count for Yahuwah's Sabbath begun. Um, Exodus, Exodus uh, 40 verses, verses 18 tells us something. It says, showing that work for the house of Yah can be done. It says, so Moses raised up the tabernacle by putting the base in place, erecting the frames, inserting the bars and setting up the post. He spread the tent over the tabernacle and he covered the tent on the top of it as Yahuwah had commanded. He took the testimony and put it in the ark, inserted the poles, through the rings of the ark and put the mercy seat, the atonement cover on top of the ark. He brought the ark into the tabernacle, hung up the veil of the covering 
and partitioned of the ark of the testimony in the holies of holies as Yahuwah had commanded him. He put up the tabernacles of the meeting in the holy place on the north side, the holy place on the outside of the veil. He set up the shoe bread in the presence on order and upon the table in front of Yahuwah as Yahuwah commanded. And he put up the lampstand of the meeting place in the, in the holy place across the table. And the part I like is when it says, and Moses raised up the courtyard, verse 33, around the tabernacle of the altar and hung up the curtains, screen of the court gate, yard gate. So Moses finished the work. And it says, this is what I like, then the clouds covered the meeting and the glory of Yahuwah filled the temple. And Moses was not able to enter the tent meeting because, of the, because the cloud rested upon it. And the glory of Yahuwah filled the tabernacle. And when the clouds were lifted up from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journey. But if the cloud was not lifted up, then they did not travel until the day it was lifted. So the clouds of Yahuwah was above the tabernacle by day. And fire was in the cloud over the tabernacle by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout their generations. Right there, that's a mighty verse. The mighty way in which Yahuwah, our Elohim, lead his people Israel. Now because of his, our forefathers' rebellion and apostasy, we have been taken captive and enslaved. And we have been like lost sheep. The Europeans have enslaved us and has given us their deity, Lord, God, and Jesus Christ. But today, upon this new moon day, the day of the blowing, the, the feast of trumpets, I just pray that Yahuwah will open our eyes to the truth of his words and cause us now to leave Rome's doctrine of lies and abomination and seek Yahuwah now while he may be found and call upon him now while he is near. Let us forsake our disobedience. Let us pray for our children, sins and our own sins, and for the sins of our forefathers, so that Yahuwah will gather us. I'm going to take a peek at, 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 at uh, 2 Ezra 8, verses 1. And it says, and he answered and say, and he answered means me saying, the Most High had made this world for many, but the world to come for few. So, only a few will respond 
to the keeping of Yahuwah's Sabbath and to his feast. Because this world is made for many. And it is Yahusha who says, Broad is the road that lead to destruction. And many there be that walk therein. But narrow is the way that leads to life. And few, very few, walk therein. Let us be among the few. This world is made for many, but Yah this world is about to come to its end. And Yahuwah promised to make a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Yahuwah promised that as the new heavens and the new earth shall remain before me, so shall your words, so shall your name, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, says Yahuwah. I'm going to read another word, one more word from 2nd Ezra's, and it's 2nd Ezra 6, verses 9. And let's see what it says. 2nd Ezra 6, verses 9. It says, For Esau is the end of the world, but Jacob is the beginning of the f that follow it so the world that esau has been ruling for these thousands of years are now coming to an end and yahuwah promised to redeem israel who have been enslaved who have been oppressed and who have been led astray like a sheep. I'm going to read one more thing and I'm, I'm going to close. Jeremiah 11. Jeremiah 11, verses 19 and 20. Jeremiah 11. Verses 19 and 20, and I like that, like that text. It says, ver 11 verses 19. That's not the right. That's not it. 19 and 20. But I, I have the wrong text. That's not the text I'm looking for. I'm looking for the text where Yahuwah promised that he would give us a new heart and that he would write his laws in our heart and give us understanding that we will walk in his statues and serve him because of ourselves we are unable we are unable to do so let's try <laughs> yes <laughs> yes um that's not the text not the text at all yes but yahuwah promised to give us a new heart and to write his spirit within us so that we can serve him and so that we can be restored as he promised as he promised us let's try deuteronomy 33 since i didn't find my favorite text that i really wanted deuteronomy 33 verses 29 33 29. Blessed are you, O Israel, who is like you, a people saved by Yahuwah. He is your shield of help 
and your majestic sword. Your enemies will cringe in front of you and you will trample them down and you will trample down their high walls. Yesterday is like the memorial of when Joshua and the children of Israel march around the city of Jericho and blow the trumpet. And the scripture tells us that the walls of Jericho fell flat and Yah gave Jericho Yah gave Joshua and the Israelites the victory over their enemies. Let us put our trust in Yahuwah. Let us walk in his ways. Let me once again say happy new moon day and happy and, and a joyful day of the feast of tabernacles. Blow the trumpet, trust the watchman. Blow it loud or land and see. Whosoever hear the message may repent and turn and free. Let us know Yah's time. Yah's time is determined by the four quarters of the moon. Yes, Israel did march around the city on the seventh day. And on the seventh day they made a shout. And the walls of Jericho fell flat. I think it's Genesis, it's Exodus 6 verse 9. Shalom, happy new moon day. Let us walk in obedience and in righteousness. Shalom, shalom, shalom.